Hey, welcome to another episode of Historic Headstones Norfolk. We are at Calvary Cemetery. We are going to do a prize video today, and I'm getting eaten alive by bugs today. <laughs> it's horrible. All right, so we're going to be talking about Rufus Emerson. Um, LGBT history is a part of Norfolk history. We don't really talk about it that much, and this weekend we are. Um, some of the history is very tragic, and what we're going to talk about today is tragic, so I'm giving you a trigger warning. Um, bad things happen to that community for them, you know, to get built up like they are now. They had to go through a lot of tragedy, and this is one of those tragedies. So we're going to be talking about Rufus Emerson. He is buried here at Calvary Cemetery in Section 2, Lot 29. He has no headstone, and I could come up with a million reasons why he doesn't, because he died on June 12, 1952, so that explains everything. So the first thing I want to do for Rufus is plant a pride uh, flag on his grave because it's never been done before, and I think it's the right thing to do. There you go, Rufus. You deserve that. <laughs> okay. Rufus Emerson passed away 58 years ago from last Monday. So this week is Pride Week, and this is the anniversary of his death as well. So this is why another reason why we're doing this video. He was shot to death by a police officer who could not tell if he was a man or a woman. He was killed because of sexuality and identified as a woman and not as a man. He died 58 years ago on last Monday, and I wanted to make a video as a memorial to his life and as to a tool to educate as many possible as part of Norfolk's LGBT history. On the night of June 11th, 1952, people were calling the police in a spot of possibly a, a colored woman or male on the 700 block of Granby Street, clad in pedal pushers and a blouse. Calling to sailors in a loud voice, come on baby, William Robinette was sent to see what the disturbance was about. When the officer got to the scene, according to the officers, when Emerson walked up to the open window of his car, he claims that Emerson stuck his head and shoulders to the door of the car and grabbed them by the pirates, pi, pi, privates, not pirates, privates, <laughs> and when he felt the pistol which he carried, he released him. Now, this doesn't make any sense to me. If he pulled up in a cop car, why would someone come up and do this? Unless he was in a, not in, he was in civilian clothes in the civilian car, because that part makes no sense to me at all. But that's what the papers were publishing. The officer said he showed Emerson his shield and told him he was under arrest. Upon Emerson, ran, after that, Emerson ran towards the post office parking lot. He claims that Emerson threw a brick at him, hit him with a board, and threatened to cut his guts out. Now, um, from what I was reading for the description of Emerson, he was a short, he was a short uh, person, so that just doesn't make any sense to me either. He stated that the chase went from Granby Street to York Street and into Brewer Street, and into the 300 block of South Lane, South Hall Lane, where he approached Emerson again and claimed where he was threatened once again. The officer said that he'd been scratched, his shirt almost ripped torn from his back, and Emerson had his hand in his pocket while he threatened him. The officer stated when he caught up with Emerson at South Hall Lane, Emerson swung at him a plank, threatened him once again, and reached into his pocket as he was grabbing a weapon. This is when the officer drew his service revolver and fired a bullet, which entered Emerson's chest and came out through his back. As Emerson lied dying on the ground in South Hall Lane, the officer called in dispatch saying he shot either a colored female or male. The two newspapers which printed two different accounts of what happened on the same day. Norfolk Journal and guys say that Emerson was running and when the officer shot him. The pilot said he was trying to hit him with a plank and then grabbed for a weapon. The pilot also said Emerson kept threatening the officer. Also said, man, I'll cut your guts out. But the other newspaper didn't say that. So these two newspapers are not even lining up into what, the right, what happened here. It's so what really did happen. We will never really know. Because he, he, he passed and we only have one side of what happened here. Patrolman was charged with homicide as a result of the fatal shooting, but in the first day of the trial, he was fully cleared in the shooting. And this was pretty common back then. I couldn't even remember. I went through a lot of these uh, accounts and I couldn't find one officer being charged or anybody being charged for offenses against the gay community. In the 1950s, downtown Norfolk had a well entrenched reputation of having prostitutes of every size, shape, orientation, gender due to being a major port. And Rufus Emerson was not an unusual sight. What was unfortunately predictable, however, was a casual and approved violence against a LGBT person and what 
his or her life was considered expandable because perceived uh, way of life that the person lived. Law officials would turn a blind eye if an LGBT person was in trouble. In many cases, they were victims of those officials without a public, without the public batting an eye to these situations. Emerson died in part for being different. That's why he died. We are here today. His, uh, he is an unmarked here. He has no headstone, which I hope one day we can change that. Maybe with the LGBT community's help, we can change that. So today we we put a, a pride uh, flag on his uh, grave here, and this is the first time this has ever been done. And I think uh, we should come together as a community, because I am part of the LBG community myself. I'm not going to give more than that, but I am part of the community. And um, we just, we need to, you know, uh, remember the past here and educate people about it. All right, guys, I know it's a pretty depressing video. It's pretty graphic, but it's something that we need to talk about. All right, guys, take care and have a great day.